Legends never die, kid. Strike three call. Welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast. This is your place to hear from a new entrepreneur every single Wednesday morning who's turning wild ideas into wild growth. I'm your host, Max Brandstetter, founder and podcast producer at Max Podcasting. And you can reach me at max at maxpodcasting.com to save time with your high quality podcast. This is episode 159. And today's guests, today's guests, plural, are Randall Thompson and Chris Dennert. They are the president and founder and CEO of Dugout Mugs. Now, you might have seen them advertise around on social media. They are super duper cool mugs and wine mugs and bottle openers and shot glasses, all made from baseball bats. I'm talking wood baseball bats and now aluminum baseball bats as well. They are licensed by the MLB. They can be found and purchased in every MLB ballpark. And as a company, they've seen crazy growth, doubling their revenue for five consecutive years in a row. And they've also been named to the Inc. 5000. In this episode, we talked how they came up with this batty idea in the first place. See what I did there? Batty. How they're building the business with a big thanks to customer feedback and their favorite baseball legends who they've been fortunate enough to meet throughout this super cool business journey. It is Randall and Chris who probably live in the dugout. Enjoy the show. Alrighty, we are here with the dynamic dugout duo of Randall Thompson and Chris Dennert from Dugout Mugs. The beautiful combination of baseball and beer, beverages, and, and entrepreneurship as well, even though that doesn't start with a B. <laughs> Randall, Chris, how you guys doing? Thanks for joining today. Yeah, thanks for having us. What's going on? Really excited to to have you on and chat about your story today. I think uh, baseball, I think, was my first love ever. And I think so many kids aspire to get to the MLB one day. Randall, you got a little taste of that. So I'd love to start with you and kind of what would your younger self say if you knew, you know what, I'm going to grow up, I'm going to get a taste of the MLB. And actually, I'm going to start a really, really clever and unique business that ties to the MLB. Yeah, for for clarity, I I did play minor league ball. I didn't get up to the big leagues. But I guess what I would tell myself is probably the same thing that I try to reiterate to myself now is uh, don't be so focused on the short term of things, kind of look at it in the bigger scale of things. Uh, I struggled a little bit in high school ball and uh, it seemed like it was the end of the world. And really, it was just kind of a little blip on the, uh, the grand scheme of everything. So, you know, I would just tell myself to relax and everything was going to be all right. Essentially, just keep keep on uh, keeping the faith that everything's going to be just fine. Can you shed a little light on what sparked the idea to actually start a business like this in the first place? Yeah. After I got released from the Blue Jays organization, I uh, went back to coaching at Florida Tech where I went to went and played college ball. And the hitting coach was in the dugout taking wooden baseball bats, cutting them in half with a, with a handsaw. And there was a bunch of loose bat barrels lying around in the dugout. I picked up a couple, examined them, and I thought to myself that you could probably drill out the center of that bat barrel and turn it into a pretty cool drinking mug. And that's how the dugout mug was born. Is that something you did frequently of thinking of random objects and thinking, I could drink something out of that? Uh, not necessarily. Like I like to look at things and then create things out of random things. So yeah, I, I mean, I have creative ideas all the time. Um, so that's common, but thinking about turning certain things into drinking mugs. No, that wasn't, wasn't my MO. Chris, how did you get into the picture? I, I imagine this crazy guy who wants to drink out of baseball bats hits you up one day and you instantly fall in love. That's kind of the story, right? Uh, no. Yeah. A little bit of both. Um, <laughs> so my background, you know, my, my entrepreneurial journey started back in 2007. So it's been a little bit, and, you know, I had a handful of ventures, some good, some great, some were total failures and cost me, you know, lots of money. But, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of things and I had a lot of experience and I, I 
can did consulting and, and still do from time to time, you know, uh, just, just, I love talking about business and talking about scale and growth and, and strategy and things like that. And, you know, Randall and I crossed paths, you know, uh, he came up about my information on the internet one day and a call was, you know, made after that. And I think, uh, verbatim, it was, Hey, I want to pick your brain about something. And I had just gotten out of a, a, a time in my life when, um, spending time unnecessarily was something I was completely against. I was like, Hey man, sorry, my brain's not for picking, but, uh, we can meet up and we can have a conversation and you can show me what you're talking about. And I'll see if it's something that we could run with as I thought the product was uh, kind of weird in the, you know, but I wasn't a huge baseball fan really. I mean, I played ball and I like baseball, but I wasn't like a, I didn't get the, the affinity to the, I didn't feel that at the beginning. Um, but I would say it was more about Randall. It, you know, I was coming into a place where, you know, I, I was saying some prayers that, that, somebody and something come across my path that kind of, you know, d- deserves my full attention and, and deserves the skill set that I developed over a decade. And, you know, and, uh, you know, anybody that knows Randall would agree, he's just, you know, down to earth, good human and effort and, and it's effortless, right? So that's the kind of, it's kind of a, a refreshing when you run into people like that. And then the idea had some legs and, but I knew it, it needed, it didn't need a conversation. It needed a lifeline really to, to take it to the level that we were tossing around in our discussions. And, you know, I did the ultimate test. I'm like, bro, listen, I'll go, I'll go all in with you on this, but you got to go all in on this, you know, no, no more of this one foot in one foot out stuff. Cause I've been in that, I've been in relationships and partnerships, you know, business relationships like that in the past and they just don't pan out. He's like, all right, yeah, I'm in. And I said, all right, well, you know, put in your two weeks at your job and I got some shit on my plate. We'll get rid of, and let's run. And he did, and we did, and five years later, we're, <laughs> it's next level. Let's just say that, you know, we're having a lot of fun, you know, making money, scaling business, living an experiential, you know, life. It's just, it's really cool to see how far it came so quickly. And I think it's a testament to our relationship uh, and the way we we go about our business. That's how I got involved is because I saw a lot of the vision uh, from the beginning, you know, I saw what some of the potential was here on multiple levels, not just sales. I'm not going to bore you with metaphors like it's a grand slam or game winning home run and walk off. And I, I would never do that. But it, it, it was a a game winning hit of a of a success that you had. And um, it sounds like you're you're a great combo and kind of a good yin yang to each other. Let's dive into how you've seen so much success over the past five years. So looking back to kind of after you met in the beginning, there's this idea for a product. What was involved in getting feedback and christening, crystallizing this product to the point that you felt great about scaling it to even more customers? I think that's an ongoing thing. I mean, even to this day, I think that we're we're getting better and better at making the product it's as simple as you make it, you send it out, you listen to the feedback from the customers, you adjust, especially if you hear it from multiple people, it's ongoing. I I think it's a, it's a lifetime thing that we're going to be doing with the company is we're going to constantly be listening to our customers and we're going to constantly be uh, just making it better based on their feedback. What would you say is the most helpful feedback you received about the mug in the first place? A lot of people gave me bad feedback on it. Uh, and I think bad feedback was was good feedback where the, the whole entire time I wanted to keep the identity of it. I thought what made it really cool is it looks like you're drinking directly from a barrel of a baseball bat. So th- there were people that said you should add a base to it. Uh, There's people that said you should add a knob to it to, for like a handle. And I think that takes what makes it really cool. And it also it would complicate the manufacturing process. But just in general, uh, I mean, the design's so simple. It, it was tough. I mean, it was tough for anybody to subtract from it. More so, everybody wanted to add to it. And uh, I would say in the beginning, just kind of listening to my, even though it goes completely against what I just said, going against my intuition was not, I didn't think it was in my best interest. So uh, I heard a lot of people said you should add to it. And I just said, nah, we're going to roll it out like the way it is. I was like, I think it's simple. I think it's scalable. Don't touch it. <laughs> Let's run. And that's no. what, <laughs> it's the way it should be. It's like, it's like a relationship. I didn't, I didn't, we, I didn't show up and we want to change each other. I'm like, all right, you're you, I'm me. It's that. Let's roll. 
It's I have a tear to my eye. Thank you, dude. What do we, we we did like 10x in 90 days because we didn't try to over innovate. We just ran, ready, fire, aim. Chris, you came in came in as a partner. You knew obviously you were both committed and left your previous jobs. Like you knew you were all in. What were your main priorities that helped you scale that way in such a short time? Focus on feedback and just just getting the product to market. You know, I think everybody's in their own damn way, right? Like I haven't had a job in a long time. You know, I've owned some hand you know, handful of companies, but it's probably been 15 years since I had a job job. And so I, I, I had ventures and things that I didn't, I wasn't passionate about and I could let go of them and just let that, let that dog die. And Randall had a vision. It was somebody who wanted to get gritty and dirty and just, you know, I, I, I've always had a saying, even, you know, whether it's consulting or businesses or anything, it's, I just want to help people do what they're doing better than they're doing it. And this was the ultimate opportunity. Um, yeah. So for me, everything kind of fell right into place. And I, and when Randall and I got together, I was like, Hey, what do you do? Good. He's like, I do this. I was like, well, here's what I do good or do well. Yeah. We're all misspeak, but you can, but it's like, yeah, what do you do? Well? Well. And here's what I do well. And you stay over there. I'll stay over here. And we've, we've kind of run in separate lanes for most of the business. What I do well is I make phone calls. I get connections. I close deals scale. And what Randall was really, really good at is the the innovation and some of the systems and uh, helping build out the team and, and keeping track of the numbers. And it just worked really well. So what I would say we focused on was just selling the damn thing, just getting it out there and selling it. And then when they sell it, say, hey, what do you like? What do you not like? Okay, pivot, you know, and, and just constantly be, you know, creating uh, better customer experiences, better product, better, f- you know, everything based on feedback, which we still do to this day, five years later. Well said. A good said, even. Good said. I love it. It's a new, I'm getting that tattooed. <laughs> One of the ways that you've been kind of able to step it up to the next level is being an official licensee of MLB, as well as the Players Association, Minor League, lots and lots of Really cool organization, super popular, obviously. But it allows you to infuse your creativity into your products, but also use like the official logos and names and rights and cer- certain things in that ballpark. Damn it, there we go with the puns. Chris, I know you had ties to the MLB, at least from a licensing standpoint, from a previous company. Can you share kind of the process for how you were able to pitched things to be licensed by the MLB in the first place and and how you were able to bring that over to dugout mugs? You know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. And when networking and connecting with people, it's very important that they know you and not just the idea that, that you know them. So when I make a phone call and say, hey, I'm Chris, here's the other company, we're already working with you in this. And it was the Players Association, to be clear. I'm, we're running with another company, we're going to scale it up, we need a license, let me know when I can get that. You know, so we were licensed with the PA in, in like three months after uh, Randall and I, you know, beginning to work together. So it happened relatively quickly. The other thing I love to say is, you know, if, you're, if your plan is better than their plan, they're going with your plan. And that's just true in life in general, especially in business. And painting an elaborate picture is, is something I feel like I do pretty well. When, when they're looking at, a, I mean, it's, it's a vertical that didn't exist. It's a, it's a category that didn't exist yet. You know, there's a little bit of a sales process there. It's like, look, here's what, here's what we've done in other companies. Here's what we've done so far in the last 90 days. Here's what we're looking to do with you. We'll do, and here's how we're going to do it, X, Y, Z. So just let's go. On top of that, we execute it. You know, there's no excuses, just execute. And at the end of the day, you're 4X, 5X. Uh, the, the minimums and you just blow the numbers out of the water. And then you took those numbers and you walked over to MLB and you said, Hey, listen, we just crushed it over here with the PA. Um, we want a license. They're like, well, you can't have one. It's like, well, look at our numbers. And they're like, okay, you can have one. You know, it's really just that it's get, getting, getting the conversations, closing the deal and then executing when you get your foot in the door. Executing and with the four X five, this is a record for X. So we're, we're going to get sponsored by Dos Equis you catch my drift so there's the efforts to kind of prove your sales and then you have the history there marketing is a a huge huge part of that what 
tactics have been effective for you as far as getting these products even on the map in potential customers' minds and then actually improving sales year over year like you've been able to do? There's certain verticals that we spend more money and spend more time and make more sales, but really what it is, it's about being genuine and clear and consistent with who you are, who you aren't, right? Like our company hasn't changed very much. The reason we've been able to scale is because from the very beginning, all we were concerned with is making a great customer experience, a quality product, one that we have a lifetime warranty on, right? We're that confident in what we make and just constantly telling our story. In, in marketing, sure, there's some verticals that at times work better than others, but marketing is all of it. It's the collective storytelling through different channels and different channels tell different stories and in different ways to different demographics. But it's really, in my mind, it's a total effort, right? And I think the effort is that that whole thing is steered by the vision, the mission, the culture, and the consistency of the company. I think the, uh, I think something valuable that could be taken from this is actually getting out and having face-to-face -face conversations with people. Early, early years, Chris and I were under a tent selling these mugs at a baseball round robin style of thing. Essentially, we were just a Facebook ad. And then everybody that was walking by this tent was somebody scrolling on their Facebook feed. We were incredibly observant on who would stop, what questions they would ask, what objections they had, who was the person stopping to ask, who were they buying for? And all these things shape your reality on a social media world and how to target for people, how to structure the ads. What verbs they use to describe it? A ton of verbs. Yeah, cute. We always hear cute from women. These are so <laughs> cute. Are you, are you referring to yourselves or your products? Both. And so <laughs> we, we start looking at it. And then when you, when you start hearing something enough face to face, and then you read comments, you read emails, or you say, hey, customer service people, Whenever we see something being brought up pretty consistently, let us know. You start to really just shape it out that way. I mean, in the beginning, you kind of got to throw a bunch of shit at the wall and see what sticks. Uh, but the more, the more you start listening, the quicker you'll figure out exactly who wants to buy it or why they don't want to buy it or who they're buying it for. And the, the better your marketing is going to get. I love that. The human Facebook ads. The attention to detail obviously goes a long way as well. I like the attention to verbs, like the vivid verbs people are using. It makes sense. I like how you run through it there. Randall, when you look at kind of the product mix today, there's it's really cool. You kind of have your original dugout mugs, and then you have the wine mugs. Then you have bottle openers. You have kind of like the end of the bat, the end of the handle that are shot glasses. Like There's a really cool mix of stuff, and you also have some special edition ones like when teams win the World Series. I'm a big Indians fan, so kind of sore subject there. But how have you been able to keep innovating and expanding your product line and coming up with things that you know are high quality and that people are going to want, but also still kind of still allows you to expand into some different territories? Well, we've been able to expand the product line because we can do uh, we, we can do limited runs on on things. We don't have to commit to it to a crazy quantity of things. So we can put a toe in the water before we jump in. We, we've just developed a good relationship with one of our manufacturing partners that if there is a concept that we have, we can do a small run. We can show it to our internal list first. If the internal list says, shoot, this is cool, then we can sell it. And then if we even take another step back from that before we even did the stainless steel or the metal dugout mug, we actually asked, our customers, if they'd be interested in buying it, it was a incredibly high number that said that they would be interested in it, but it was even a higher number of people that said they would only be interested in it if we had an MLB license with it. So then we went to MLB and we said, Hey, here's what our audience of hundreds of thousands of people is telling us, I guess all roads lead back to just asking better questions on the front side of things. And then also being able to manage your risk on the front side. If we had to commit to a hundred thousand units in order to, to do it, then we probably wouldn't test as many things, but if it's a small run of things, why not?
Why not? Why not start a podcast as well? Well, big reason not to might be that it takes up all your time. Oh, that would be a really good reason to reach out to Max at maxpodcasting.com to help take a lot of those hours and efforts off your plate and still deliver your high quality podcast. I'll help you out with the three P's of podcasting. That is planning, production, and promotion. And I, yes, I do love alliteration as well. That's kind of beside the point. Email me at max at maxpodcasting.com to save time with your high quality podcast. Now to the key lime pie of wild business shoutouts of the week. So let's switch gears a little bit. Let's get to a fan favorite segment called the wild business shoutout of the week. The wild business shoutout of the week. That's very cute. Wild Business Shout of the Week is where we talk about a creative marketing campaign approach, kind of something buzz or breakthrough that caught our attention. And Randall, there's a, in Raleigh, North Carolina, there's a bar that had a uh, an approach that was pretty key. You mind sharing what that was and why it stood out to you? Yeah, I was, te- I was texting with one of my buddies a couple nights ago, and he sent me this link of like saying, uh, here's a bar that's going to just sell an NFT. And if you, if you own the NFT, then you can get into the bar and they're going to do very limited amounts of NFTs. And I said, this is a horrible model. I mean, I don't know anything about the restaurant industry, but to my understanding, it's a low margin, high, high volume type of thing. And so then we kind of started going back and forth and he shared with me that he has a buddy in rally that has a bar that it holds a dozen people and I'm just reading what, what he said, because I don't know anything about this, but I thought it was an intriguing concept. It holds a dozen people and you have to be a member with a key. And the, the owner of the place only gave out a hundred keys. You can bring however many people you want to bring as long as you can unlock the door. And I just thought about the, the buzz that that would create around rally. And uh, I thought it was a really interesting concept. Yeah, I really, really like that example. I know, like, I know very, very little about NFTs, but the idea of of keys and kind of sharing something in this space um, is really, really cool. So it's neat it stuck out to you. And like, as proof of the word of mouth, like your friend literally like texted you, told you about it. So you you know it was something that was worth sharing. Something that Chris will be able to relate with here is the the SUV model that he he leans into very often is scarcity, urgency, value there's definitely a bunch of scarcity that's that's tied into that. There's definitely value that's tied into that. If you want to sell something to somebody uh, using that SUV model is uh, typically a, has proven to be a good model of things. Well, speaking of scarcity, let's wrap up with some scarce questions, some rapid fire Q and a, you guys ready for it? Ready. All right, let's do it. Let's get wild. Randall, what is your favorite mug number one favorite mug or, or product that you've created gotta go classic wood dugout mug with a mlb logo on it any any mlb logo there you go friend friend of every team <laughs> how about you chris uh the sandlot mug that was a really cool collaboration we did with david mickey evans who was the writer uh director narrator of the sandlot we got to go hang out at a beach bar with him uh for a whole day and we had tequila and we filmed and we used drones and we created this badass mug with his iconic photo wrapped around it with all the boys on the backstop. Um, and then we just sat there having beers and signing photos and signing mugs and talking about the movie. And like that mug has a lot of history and story behind it. So I'd probably say that one. Shout out baby Ruth. Yeah. Lots of nostalgia for the Sandlot. Randall, who is an MLB player that you've kind of met through the dugout mugs journey that, you were like, damn, this is pretty cool hanging out with them. <laughs> it probably, it's probably got to be Ken Griffey Jr. Oh yeah, yeah. Just be. I, I don't know. I don't know if you could technically say like we were hanging out, but we, we were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. That, no, that he, Griffey just texted me. He actually said you were. So good. Okay, cool. <laughs> How, that's that's amazing. Kids dream. How about you, Chris? Oh, uh, well, that's the same. So Griffey was my guy growing up, watching him, and um, you know the fact that. I was able to give him a uh, lifetime achievement award dugout mug backstage in LA. That was pretty sick. As far as players we've hung out with, um, David Ortiz is, is just a great dude. You know, he's a lot of fun. 
but there's so many now it's crazy. I, I can't even believe it. Sometimes when I flip through my phone and like, see all these places we're going next Friday, I'm going to be up in Baltimore with, with uh, Cal Ripken. It's just cool. You know, um, th- this, this business has provided many of those opportunities. I think again, collectively is, is what's exciting is all of them, all of them for many different reasons. Those are big, big names, big, superheroes to many, many people. And thank you so much, both of you, for coming on the podcast, sharing the dugout mug story. Where is the best place if anybody wants to buy some dugout mugs as, as a gift or, or for themselves? Where's the best place to do that? Dugoutmugs.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Just look up dugout mugs. There's only one. Perfect. Thank you so much. And last thing, whoever wants, it could be either you just shout out your favorite words of baseball advice. Go. Legends never die, kid. Baby Ruth. The babe. Thank you so much, Randall and Chris, for sharing your baseball business bonkers banana split story. And thank you, Wild listeners, for tuning in to another episode. If you want to hear more wild stories like this one, make sure to follow the Wild Business Growth Podcast on your favorite app and tell a friend about the podcast. Seriously, they're like sitting there waiting for you to just tell them about the Wild Business Growth Podcast. You can also find us on Good Pods. And for any help with podcast production, you can learn more at maxpodcasting.com. Until next time, let your business run wild. Bring on the bongos! Bongos!